Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to today's Wild Rift guide. In today's guide, we're going to be taking a look at Evelyn, Agony's Embrace. Evelyn is an AP assassin that is played in the jungle. She's a very easy and simple champion to understand with only one thing in mind. Evelyn always wants to look to quickly assassinate enemies and get out before she dies. Before level 5, Evelyn is very weak, but once she reaches level 5 and she has her invisibility, you can use this to get around the map and gank any lane with ease. Taking a quick look through the build with Evelyn, as an AP assassin, you want to build a lot of items that give Evelyn ability power. This will make her abilities, especially her ultimate, deal more damage. So you could be that assassin and jump into the backline and one shot enemy carries. For first item, we go for Infinity Orb, a great item for Evelyn. 85 ability power, a little bit of extra movement speed, which will help you get around the map a lot quicker. Early magic penetration, but a great thing is the passive with Infinity Orb, the abilities and empowered attacks. Quickly strike for 20% bonus damage against enemies below 35% health. Most of the time, you use your ultimate when enemies are low on health. So that will deal uh, extra damage and deal extra crit damage, as well as the other abilities on top of that that you will be using. Death Cap as well as your second item, 110 ability power, increasing your overall ability power by 40%. So a lot of ability power getting stacked onto Evelyn, making her the assassin that she always wants to be. For the boots, I think most of the time, I only boots are the best option it gives you the extra cooldown not only for your um, abilities but also your summoner spells uh, which is quite nice it reduces the cooldown of flash and then for the boots upgrade protoboat is great it allows you to gap close and get closer to the enemies if you need to or even try and escape away with protobelt lich bane as well with evelyn you want to use abilities and jump on top of the enemy carries after using abilities which means your auto attacks afterwards will deal bonus magic damage you also get a lot of ability power ability haste and the extra movement speed with lich bane void staff as well a lot of extra ability power at this point of the game there might be some enemies building some magic resist so the extra magic penetration that you get from void staff is going to help you a lot and then your last item we have morella nomicon this can be swapped out for other items but i think morella nomicon is the best because there's so much healing in the game right now grievous wounds is really important to build on ap assassins like evelyn so you don't have to worry about anyone healing through all of your burst damage for the runes electrocute hit the champion with three separate attacks or abilities with uh, in three seconds that deals bonus adaptive damage so you'll get to deal extra ap da uh, ap damage based on you dealing damage with three separate attacks or abilities really easy to do everyone has her thirst ability that she spams a lot she auto attacks she uses her third ability sometimes and even her ultimate so sometimes you'll get your ultimate to deal extra electrocute damage and it's really great for evelyn because she wants to jump in do a huge bunch of burst damage and then look to try and escape away to safety she's not going to be in fights for a long time so that's why we go for electrocute instead of conqueror giant slayer sometimes evelyn does struggle against tankier champions that like to build a lot of bonus health so giant slayer helps with that bonus do you deal bonus damage based on the enemy's uh champ any champion's bonus health up to 10 percent bonus damage when an enemy champion has 500 bonus health so 500 bonus health is not a lot at all so if they build 500 bonus health you get to deal extra 10 percent damage to that champion so really nice helps you a lot to deal extra damage to champions that might be a little bit tanky it might struggle a little bit for evelyn for the next room we have nullifying orb gives you an extra bit of a shield with evelyn you like to jump onto the back lines so you will be taking quite a lot of damage sometimes and the nullifying orb just gives you that extra little bit of a shield when you are low on health just to let you survive a little bit longer and it also scales with ap so we're building a lot of ap so also nullifying orb will scale at with ap but this can also be swapped out for maybe hunter titan if you want some uh, tenacity and extra health or other runes that can work out well especially bone platen is another good one and then for our final rune ability haste with hunter genius being able to stack a lot of ability haste which is quite nice for evelyn it means that she can use her abilities more often that means she, she can you um, go invisible use her taunt with her second ability and look to try and go in as much as possible and then for the sp some of the spells we have flash to flash in to try and get the killing blow which is normally what you do with evelyn or to flash away to safety and then as a jungler 
we always want to take smite i normally like to run red smite because that means we can deal extra damage and they won't be able to deal as much damage to us when we smite enemy champions but blue smite can also help if you want to gap close and reduce the movement speed of enemy champions but that's it for the items runes and some of the spells for evelyn let's head on to the abilities First up, let's take a look at Evelyn's passive, which is Demon Shade. Evelyn enters Demon Shade after not attacking or casting for a few seconds. Taking damage from an enemy champion or turret puts Demon Shade on a one and a half second cooldown. And in Demon Shade, Evelyn regenerates health every second when she is below 1,300 health. So this is really good when Evelyn looks to go in, look for engages, looks to burst down the champion, might take a little bit of damage. And then when you go back into Demon Shade after a few seconds, then you'll be able to regenerate health, which allows you to maybe go back into a team fight and look to burst another champion down. And the great thing about this as well is it keeps you healthy throughout the jungle. When you're clearing through the jungle, when you're walking from camp to camp, you'll be able to heal up a little bit as well. And at level 5, Demon Shade grants her camouflage. So this means most of the time with Evelyn, you just want to full clear the jungle. You don't want to compete for any scuttle crabs early on because Evelyn is very weak. You just want to full clear jungle and get level 5 and then she will be camouflaged and you also get access to your ultimate. So as you can see, this is what camouflage Evelyn looks like. You're basically invisible. The only way that enemy champions can see you is if you walk a little bit too close. As you can see, there's a little bit of an exclamation mark above Evelyn. That means I am seen by enemy champions or by control wards. These are just little vision wards. These will not see Evelyn at all. You have to buy the red control wards to be able to see Evelyn. Whether you put this in the middle of the lane or in the jungle, to maybe try and track her because evelyn is very very hard to track so make sure when you're against evelyn you buy control wards and you make sure you keep an eye out because she's very very scary to deal with when she turns camouflage for the first ability we have hate spike unleashes two lines of spikes dealing magic damage each to all enemies struck and can be recast within the next few seconds it deals 50 percent damage to minions this is because evelyn in the mid lane was quite popular for a, a little while a few seasons ago now um, but it still does 100 percent damage to monsters don't get minions and monsters mixed up monsters is still jungle camps minions is lane minions so you'll still be able to deal 100 percent of the damage to monsters which means you can clear through the jungle very very quickly as you can see with hate spikes it's just a little ability as you can see you could just reactivate it twice if you want to it's on a very very low Low cooldowns especially at later points during the game you can see that when you move around the first time you use hate spikes there's a little bit of delay with evelyn but the second one you could just easily just use it as you're roaming around this is really good because when you're running away you can just use hate spikes hate spikes wherever you want or whenever you want so you could use it to deal a little bit of damage and basically stop enemies from running towards you because you will deal a lot of damage but evelyn's second ability we have allure which curses target champion or monster for a few seconds and evelyn next attack or champion will expunge the curse and slow them for a few seconds and if the curse lasts at least two and a half seconds expunge it charms instead for the target for just under two seconds and if the target is a champion it shreds them shreds their magic resist by a percentage for a few champions if the target is a monster it just deals additional damage instead and casting a law does not remove demon shade so that's a really really important part as well so when we're using the second ability so i'm going to use it here on the target dummy you can see i'm still camouflaged but a big thing to know is that players will see the little charm above their head so you see how the target dummy has the little charm above his heads the champions enemy champions will see this everyone will see this so you have to make sure that you're very very quick when that charm becomes up and available because players are going to know that you're nearby when you use the charm so as you can see the charm takes a little bit of time to charge up if you use an auto attack or anything after uh, just before the charm uh, gets fully stacked then you're just going to slow instead so you can use the second ability and then use um, the first ability if you want to to get a quick burst of damage and slow them however i wouldn't really recommend that i would always wait for the charm to be fully stacked when the charm is fully stacked as you can see you can use the ability and you're going to charm them which means that they're just going to constantly keep running towards evelyn and at the same time you will get that magic resist shred so that's that big combo that you want to do with evelyn you want to use your charm on top of your abilities and use your ultimate to pretty much burst them down but the third ability we have whiplash which whips a target with lashes applying on hit effects and dealing magic damage equal percent to a percentage of their maximum health and then you also gain movement speed for a few seconds 
Enter Demon Shade enhances the next attack to pull Evelyn or to her target, dealing increased magic damage equal to a percentage of their maximum health to all enemies in their way. So if you're in Demon Shade, then you'll be able to basically jump. You can see there's a little bit of a dash here. You can just basically dash to the target. But if you're not, and if you're not in Demon Shade, you can see that the um the range is definitely not as long as before so when we're in demon shade as you can see here when we turn invisible we're able to jump you can see that there's a little bit of a dash so you can use this on top of your charms when you use your second ability you can use your third ability as a little bit of a dash on top of that and then you'll be able to use your first ability afterwards but when you're not in demon shade as you can see there's not a lot of range at all and lastly for evelyn's ultimate we have last caress which evelyn briefly goes untargetable and decimates the area in front of her before warping backwards a long distance dealing magic damage and is increased to 230 percent to enemies below 35% health. So with this ultimate, you always want to use this as the killing blow. Use your other abilities beforehand, get the enemies low enough on health, and then use this as an execute because you'll be able to do a lot of damage when they go below 35% health. Now, as you can see, this is the ultimate. You can see that it's a little bit confusing, but basically the little arrow will basically tell you the direction that Evelyn will go into. So when I use the ultimate here, you can see that I will be going back. You can see there's a little shadow as well, which will show you exactly where you're going. And when champions are here, you're going to deal damage in this whole area. The only area that you're not going to deal damage is that little arrow part behind you. But other than that, you'll be able to deal all damage. So look, even if I just point it a little bit here towards the target dummy, look at that. I can still deal damage to that target dummy. So you're going to be able to do a lot of damage. But as you can see, when they're not high on health, then when they're high on health, sorry, you be able, you won't be able to deal that much damage. But if I quickly put this target dummy a little bit lower on health you can see that boom i deal extra damage and the crit will then stack on top with infinity orb as well so you'll be able to pretty much burst enemies pretty much in one hit and then you'll be able to teleport away to safety with the ultimate being able to walk you back to safety so it's really really great ultimate to execute enemies For Evelyn's combos, you're always going to want to start with your second ability, your charm, and making sure that this charm is basically fully stacked after two and a half seconds, and then you can use your abilities afterwards to deal a lot of damage. The most basic combos using your second ability and then using your third ability in demon form to dash towards the target dummy. Use your first ability to deal a bunch of damage and then ultimate straight afterwards. So what you can do is you can use your second ability, wait for it to charm up, and then use your third ability, first ability a couple of times, and then as soon as the charm ends you can use your ultimate to jump away to safety but then you can also use the charm with other abilities as well so you can use your charm and say for example you're not in range of your second ability you can use your first ability instead and then use the charm to get into range of your third ability and then again use your ultimate straight afterwards but if you want to get into range of your third ability straight away, this is where Protobelt can definitely come in handy. So we, we, what we can do, we can use the charm. And then what we do is Protobelt into E and then use our first ability afterwards and then use the ultimate to dash. So as you can see, it's just always using your second ability, making sure you wait until the charm is fully stacked and then you do using what ability you can use. You know, if you're in range, you can use your third, abil third ability or if you have Protobelt available, you can also use your third ability like that or use your first ability from range and use that charm to use your third ability deal extra damage and then execute them with your ultimate for the leveling order for evelyn at level one you want to go for your first ability this is by far the best ability to clear through the jungle at level one and it deals the most damage to clear through that first camp as quick as possible and then at level two we want to go for a lure even though we don't get the extra damage from the third ability a lure you just wait until it's fully charmed and we're going to be dealing extra damage to monsters when we roam around the jungle when we're clearing through the jungle so lure is actually very very important when you want to clear the jungle early on with evelyn then we want to go for our third ability so we have all three of our abilities available which will be very very strong and then you want to make sure you max your first ability this is going to be your main damage source when you're clearing through the jungle it clears through the jungle very very quickly it does aoe damage and it has a very very low cooldown so you can keep spamming it over and over again also it helps a lot when you're ganking and then your second ability is going to be maxing your third ability and then you max your second ability last so that's your quick leveling order and that's pretty much everything for the evelyn guide so i'll see you all in in the gameplay all right on to the gameplay we go with evelyn i'm using the uh the cool 
season reward skin as well from Evelyn. I believe it was called Crimson, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was the name of it. It was called Crimson Evelyn. Uh, one of the cool skins, actually, that they released um, for the ranked season rewards. But with Evelyn, obviously, she's an assassin. She is quite difficult to play sometimes because you need to make sure you know your limits. You know when to go in. You know when, to, when you want to go in, when you want to engage. And you need to make sure you escape away with safety. Now, as you can see in the early game, what I'm going to do here is I'm basically just going to full clear the jungle. I mentioned this a little bit in the guide, but I just want to clear the jungle as quick as possible. You can see I go for my first ability at level one. You can clear through the Krugs very, very quickly, smite the big one away, and then clear through the little ones very, very easily because you'll be able to deal AOE damage. As you can see, we're just going to clear through all of that. We'll do a little bit of damage there. We then go for our second ability. And what we're going to do, we're going to wait for the charm fully stacked. You can see, boom, there's that big massive burst of damage that you can deal to jungle monsters. So as you're moving around with Evelyn in the jungle, you can kite around as well the jungle by using your hate spikes at range. But make sure you always auto attack in between because your auto attacks will definitely deal a lot of damage. Now smite that away allure the next jungle camp and clear that away as well so as we're clearing through the jungle this is all we're doing but most of the time with junglers what you do is you do like a full red side clear and then after you do your full red side clear then you try and look for the bottom scuttle but as you can see in this game what we're going to do is we're not going to go for the scuttle crab we're just going to go for a full clear because with evelyn she's one of the rare champions with champions like vi that you just want to get level five as quick as possible you see, we're just going to clear through the jungle and keep doing what we are doing and try and get level 5 as soon as possible. We're going to keep our smite available as well because one big thing about Evelyn is that sometimes you do get um, ganked sometimes. Or not ganked, sorry. You do some, sometimes get jungle invaded by enemy junglers because Evelyn is very weak before level 5, before she gets her ultimate. But really, at level 5 is where she becomes strong. So you can see, I've used my smite here. I would normally go for level 5, but you can see that my Wukong is in a little bit of trouble in the top lane. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into the top lane and I'm just going to jump on top of this Pantheon and get a nice and easy kill on to pantheon and they're going to push this wave afterwards now this is one thing you want to do with a jungler because if i left this uh lane in the state that it was then the lane would have crashed it would have stayed in a terrible terrible spot for my wukong but my wukong was way too low on health so what i did i pushed out the wave i made sure that i was able to uh push out the wave and crash that minion wave under tower because I've, if i didn't then gwen can just freeze the wave in the top lane and wukong will be in a lot of trouble so me getting that kill in top lane means that I'm level 5. And as you can see, now I am camouflaged. I'm going to be camouflaged now for the rest of the game. And we're going to see how things go. So top scuttle crab I cleared. The second scuttle crab I'm now going to clear in bot side as well. You can see every single time I'm clearing jungle camps or clearing scuttle crabs, I'm always waiting for that charm to be fully stacked. You have a little sound bar which actually tells you, you know, and as soon as you hear that, then you know that the charm is fully stacked. So you can go in and you can deal a bunch of burst damage. And all we're going to do, we're going to keep on farming for now because we can see the lane states. You know, bot lane, they're not really pushing in too much. Mid lane is in a pretty even state. Our top wave is getting pushed in. So all we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to look to try and farm. We can see that there is a vision ward there now. So that's that red vision ward. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to completely skip that vision ward and I'm going to gank through the lane instead. And I'm going to keep an eye on them. Now, I think I just saw Pantheon there. I'm not too sure, but I think I saw a glimpse of Pantheon. So all I'm doing, I'm just waiting this bush. They're not going to be able to see me this bush as you can see we see the pantheon here unfortunately i kind of missed my charm ever so slightly but i'm able to hit it afterwards anyway on the kaiser we get the counter gank we kill the pantheon we kill the soraka afterwards and then we're easily able to jump onto kaiser so really nice and a really good way that you can use evelyn do you know you don't always have to gank through the jungle you don't have to always gank through the river you can always walk through the lane because that's going to be where the enemy least expects you to be so we saw a little glimpse of pantheon i was like he's going to gank here i'm going to be able to counter gank so i was able to counter gank i wasn't able to charm the kaiser i did originally uh, use the allure on kaiser but i just wanted to jump on pantheon uh, straight away to make sure i keep my team safe as you see, Pantheon tried to ulti bot lane. Unfortunately, you couldn't get an ulti bot lane off. Or another kill. So we're able to get another uh, kill in the bot side for our team here. 
as you can see every single time i'm clearing through a jungle camp i'm always using my charm i'm always using my second ability but obviously with these gameplays i'm not always going to have the cleanest of gameplay there's always going to be parts in the gameplay that i will look at and i'll be like okay this is something that i can improve on myself and this is something you guys can improve on as well because these guides and this a to z guide is not only about uh, me showing you how to play the champion but also mistakes as well because everyone makes mistakes but it's about learning from your mistakes it's about learning your limits learning when to go in learning when to back off and knowing what to do so we can see the objectives are both available both top and um bottom objective are available we can see that the pantheon is already there now evelyn is not really great during team fights you normally want to try and find isolated targets you can see here what we do is we actually decide to go for the rift herald instead so we trade the dragon for the rift herald and then we're able to take this with ease. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up into the Baron lane. And we're just going to drop this straight away into the Baron lane. So we're going to get them tower platings in the Baron lane. And also secure the first tower of the game. The game's not all about dragons. You can see in this game, all you have to do sometimes, all you have to do is not contest dragons. All you can do instead is go for the Rift, uh, Rift Herald. And then the Rift Herald will give you a lot of gold by getting first tower of the game. You can see, we see the Gwen here all by herself. We try and do as much damage to her as possible we get the execute with our ultimate dealing crit damage and wukong gets the kill there as well so again you see that i'm playing through the wukong in top side we get a second charge of this rift herald as well we're going to be able to take this red buff evelyn is here wukong needs to be a little bit careful you can see the pantheon ulti is coming but we got the blasting cone and we are able to escape so not only do we get one charge of herald in top lane we also got a second charge because they were too, too busy distracted in the bot lane with the dragon so we lose the first dragon in the game yes it's a little bit of stats but we got a huge amount of gold for us getting the rift held and getting double charges we also got a kill on the gwen at the same time so again like i said it's not always about the dragon sometimes it's about picking the objectives that is right for the situation of the game like we said like i said we saw pantheon there already yes i could have gone to dragon maybe try to kill pantheon but sometimes you don't need to do that sometimes you just need to trade objectives get the rift held and take an advantage in the top side of the map instead you can see that we're going to try and go on to the soraka here soraka is a really easy champion that we can burst down because she doesn't really have a lot of health we're going to use our smite as well unfortunately soraka does live they both flash away though so it's two flashes i definitely could have used my ultimate maybe a little bit earlier there and maybe killed her but we still used our flash we still able i uh, still use their flash sorry uh, so both pantheon and soraka flashes are down so my main target this game is actually going to be soraka because if i focus down anyone like uh you know gwen akali anyone like that i'm not gonna be able to kill them because of the soraka healing you see here that i'm gonna kill pantheon and then trying to trade a little bit with the gwen Try to deal as much damage as possible and dodge the abilities. And then we're going to use the ultimate and boom, we get the double kill. That was kind of what I was talking about in the guide. You know, using your first ability, you can still move around and you can still dodge abilities as many times as you want. So you can just keep using your first ability at range and it's going to deal damage whilst you're kiting, whilst you're dodging abilities, which is great in that situation because I was able to dodge around. I was able to use my first ability, still deal damage and then use my ultimate to kill Grant. So we're currently four, zero and three on Evelyn, which is very, very cool. I mean, even though Evelyn got a uh, recent nerf as well, Evelyn still feels very, very strong. So... We're going to just clear through the top side of the jungle. As a jungler as well, it's always important to make sure that you're clearing through all the jungle camps when they are available. Because that's kind of your only source of income in terms of gold and also experience. Uh, because you're not going to be in the lane. You're not going to try and get lane farm. Or maybe you're not going to gank as much. And you can see we can see Gwen in the top lane at the moment. Maybe stepping up a little bit too far. We use our charm. But we unfortunately miss our third ability. We unfortunately dash towards the... Uh, the minion instead that's an instance where i probably should have used my first ability instead to um to charm her um at range and then use my third ability straight afterwards but unfortunately she went out of vision as soon as she went out of vision you can see that my third ability just locked onto the minion straight away but still though uh we still get the pressure of using the um using gwen up in the top lane you can see Sorak is here as well. She's in a whole load of trouble there. We are unstoppable as well. Akali, uh, not Akali, sorry. Ari is also in a lot of trouble. I'm not sure if Ari actually dies here or not. 
Not actually too sure. Um, yep, he does. Die. She does die in the end. There's more kills for us. And then we're going to look to the mid lane now. You can see that we're still invisible. We're going to look towards the mid lane. We're going to try and get the charm. Unfortunately, we can't get the charm, but we're just going to jump onto Pantheon instead. Wait for his shield to come down. And what we do is we use our ultimate backwards to jump onto the Pantheon and get the kill. Unfortunately, we die for it. But it's a cool way that you can use your ultimate. Something I didn't really explain is that you can use your ultimate. Instead, if you don't feel like you're in range of your ultimate and you're going to deal damage, you can just use it backwards instead. And when you use it backwards, that means that you are going to teleport towards the champion. And then you can look to use your other abilities on top of that. So another cool way that you can use your, um, your ultimate. As you can see with my build, I have Infinity Orb as the first item, and then I went for Death Cap. So we have our two items completed already for Evelyn. We're then going for Lich Bane as our third item. Uh, Lich Bane works great because it procs with our Whiplash, our third, um, our third ability, and also because sometimes we auto attack in between using our Hate Spikes. So it's a really, really good way of. Um, of dealing a little bit of extra damage now you can see here gwen is in a little bit of trouble i'm gonna use my protobolt forward like i said and use my flash afterwards do a little bit of extra damage and gwen is unfortunately dead i wasn't able to charm gwen but i had my protobolt i had my flash and i was able to deal enough damage to get the kill and we go back into another team fight it's a complete fiesta this game we're gonna jump onto pantheon here use our first ability to get another kill which means we are now eight one and three then we're gonna go towards this dragon and secure the second dragon of the game so as i said we didn't secure the first dragon but sometimes you don't need to secure first dragon sometimes you can just take the objective on the opposite side of the map instead which in this instance uh, instance is the rift herald able to take the rift herald take the tower a first tower of the game in the top lane give a lot of gold over to wukong at the same time because that's also going to give wukong a little bit of free time you can see that i'm just going to charm kaisa here make sure she's out of range now here I should have used my ultimate straight away to get to safety. Unfortunately, I did get silenced by Soraka. And I did get a little bit caught out. Which is kind of my mistake, to be honest. Um, I think as soon as I see my pan uh, the Pantheon ultimate, I should just escape away to safety. But instead of that, I basically just killed myself. Basically. I think that's what happened. You can see that Wukong is just going to heal up as well. But Wukong definitely has a lot of gold this game. Because uh, I was able to get the first tower of the game up in the Baron lane. For the Wukong, you see 10,000 gold already for the Wukong. So he's also definitely in a strong spot. But yeah, a little bit of a mistake. Uh, and it also shows why Soraka can be good against Evelyn at the same time. Because if you're charming someone as Soraka, you could use the silence spell to basically stop Evelyn from teleporting backwards. Uh, so she's basically stuck. So, a little bit of a uh, mistake from my part. Um, I should have just backed away as soon as I saw the Pantheon ulti. I just thought that maybe the rest of my team would have followed up and we could have actually got another kill there. Unfortunately, we weren't able to. As you can see, for now, we're just going to clear through the jungle. Can't farm up as we usually do. And now we have our Lich Bane. But before Lich Bane, we're going to go to our bot, si bot side of the map. And as you can see, because of our because all of our bot side uh, camps up and available, we can just quickly clear this as fast as possible. Use our smite, use our second ability, the allure to do extra damage to jungle camps. As you can see, it's going to be a huge, huge amount of crit damage. And you can see that Evelyn clears the jungle very, very quickly with your first ability and your third ability. Like, very, very quickly. It's disgusting, actually. You see that I just cleared the whole bot side of my jungle very, very quickly. So, with Evelyn, always make sure that you're farming up. Always make sure that you are. Lich Bane is now completed. We're now moving on to our fourth item, which is going to be Void Staff. 18 kills tonight in the moment. Eight, zero, uh, eight, two, and three. So, like I said, our target this game is the Soraka. We always want to try and focus Soraka because she's going to be the one that's healing a lot. I could have maybe gone for anti-heal this game. Uh, I could have maybe gone for Oblivion Orb a little bit earlier. Yeah, unfortunately, we did it. You can see that I can see Kaisa a little bit isolated here in the back line. And I'll jump onto Kaisa straight away and kill her with my ultimate. I don't think I actually no, I think I escape here don't I oh no I don't escape here unfortunately yeah but you can see that with Evelyn you're always looking for the flanks unfortunately we didn't actually get in range to charm the Soraka so we can't burst the Soraka but we was able to burst down the Kaiser and trade kills um but unfortunately the rest of my team 
um was um a little bit in trouble yoni's going in trying to get a kill here i don't think he's gonna be able to get the kill and i think he's gonna die for it as well um yeah i tell my team to buy anti-heal now i think maybe i could have bought anti-heal earlier but the good thing was this game is that every single time i went back to base i was always able to buy an item so now we're going to get the anti hole So now when I'm going to jump on and when I'm going to burst champions, I'm going to be basically dealing more damage because the healing from Soraka is not going to deal that much. So I can look to burst. Plus, they're not going to be able to heal as much. So it's going to be a lot easier for us. Um, group, please. There we go. Yeah, so there was a little bit of an overextension for my team in the top side of the map. You can see that I kind of um, made back for it by killing the Kaiser in the back line, but they kind of overextended the top side of the map and they uh, kind of got a little bit caught out. You can see that I'm going to go for the Pantheon here. I'm not going to wait for my charm because if I waited for my charm there, this is a big mistake that I make again. Yeah, <laughs> it's another mistake. I, <laughs> I, to be honest, I... <laughs> Limit testing? Question mark, maybe? I don't really know. I mean, I use my ultimate to hopefully go towards the Pantheon, but even though I have Oblivion Orb, Pantheon still gets a lot of healing from the Soraka. And I do unfortunately die for it. I think I should have just taken Pantheon's Flash and I should have just gone away to safety. Um, but you can see there that sometimes you don't need to fully wait for your uh, second ability or charm to go through. Because if I waited for my second ability to fully stack there, like the charm stack, if I wait for it to all go through, then I wasn't going to kill him. Or I wasn't even going to stop his back at all. And he was going to back before my charm was going to be fully stacked. So sometimes you just need to get the extra slow instead of charming instead. But the next dragon is up. We're up in five seconds. Luckily for us, uh, the dragon is not up in time. Um, whilst we're dead. So we're going to go one. towards the dragon now. And this game is maybe a little bit closer than what it should have been. Uh, I think I've definitely died a few times. I shouldn't of this game. That's definitely proof costly. Now you can see my positioning right now. I'm looking for the flank. Minions are not going to aggro me. I'm always looking for the flank. I'm looking for Soraka here. And as soon as I see Soraka, I jump in straight away. And we do a bunch of burst damage. We're able to jump over the wall. And we kill the Soraka and the Kaiser in the back line. We're then able to jump away. We do die for it. But we did what we needed to do. We jumped onto Soraka in the back line. We didn't even need to use the charm. Because the big thing is, if we use our charm, then Soraka knows that we're nearby. So instead of using the charm, all I do is I use my third ability and my uh, first ability straight away afterwards. And then we're able to get the kill. Now, honestly, my team could have finished here. This could have been the easy finish for my team. Um, but I'm instead, for some reason, we uh, we take down. So yeah, could have finished for sure. Because there's only one of them left alive. I mean, we could have also taken the top lane inhibitor instead. Um, but instead, they went for the dragon. I mean, it's definitely the safer way. But look, Jin's pushing bot lane for some reason. So um, Karma was in top lane. And to be honest, if they all just went mid lane and pushed, it was a four versus one. And they could have easily ended the game there. Easily, easily ended the game. Because uh, there's only Pantheon left alive. Jin gets a little bit caught out here. Soraka uses her ultimate. I think uh, I think Jin dies here. Yeah, unfortunately Jin dies. I think we do get the uh, Baron for it. I think I just walk up. <laughs> I remember this now. I think I just walk up and I smite it just in case. I just walk up and I'm just like, oh yeah, 1,500. <laughs> Little bit of smite. Stolen. We stole the Baron away from our old, own team. But still, smite death. Um, so as you can see, this is another thing you could do with Evelyn. Like I said, you know, you're not going to get aggroed by uh, minions in the lane or anything like that because we're invisible. So sometimes there might be a few players that might overextend a little bit in mid lane by themselves. So what you can do is you can play like this, play a little bit further forward. And that means you can kind of be your own walking um, ward at the same time, which can be very, very helpful. We see Panty in the mid lane, but unfortunately we're... Not going to be able to jump on him. I need to be a little bit more careful now because before I jumped a little bit too far forward. And when I did jump a little bit too far forward, I did get a little bit caught out myself. So I think the Wukong, yeah, the Wukong needs to go back here. Um, needs to be a little bit careful. As you can see, we're not taking any crazy risk, risks at the moment. We got the mid lane, mid lane wave pushing in. We just take the Scuttle Crab. And then we go back to base to get our Void Star. So we've got four items working towards our fifth and final item, uh, which is going to be Morella Nomicon. Uh, Wukong's in a little bit of trouble in bot side and also top side. We're also in a little bit of trouble. So all Jin's doing for now is pushing down mid lane. 
And that's pretty much what we need to do. We can just push down mid lane here. We got mid lane, mid wave pushing in with Baron. We can then look to try and pick up Gwen in the top lane because Gwen is all by herself, unfortunately. We're going to use this. We're going to use our first ability. We get the charm off in the end, but we're not able to jump. I mean, that's where I probably could have used Protoville and then my third ability. Um, but unfortunately, I um, I didn't use it at the time. I definitely should have used Ultimate. I mean, not Ultimate, sorry. Uh, Protoville and then my third ability. You can see, I'm not attacking the minions here, so I stay in camouflage form. That obviously, I mean, most of the time, most players will understand that I am nearby because of the Baron up minions. If I didn't have Baron on me, then I would have been completely invisible. The Elder Dragon spawned. The big next big major objective. Again, I'm using the Baron minions here just to try and push mid lane. Again, I'm invin uh, invisible, so I'm not really um, visible at all to enemies, but... Jin unfortunately gets caught out here. I'm not really too sure what Jin's doing. Walking up and also attacking a Gwen for some reason is a terrible idea. A really, really terrible idea. You can see here what I'm going to do. I did get caught by a pink ward there. There is a little bit of a pink ward in that bush. You can see I'm just waiting and waiting around. They don't have vision of me just yet. They did have vision of me a second ago. I'm trying to charm the Soraka on the back line. We instead jump onto the Gwen instead. Use our first ability a few times. We see, we see that we need to be a little bit careful here. Uh, we need to be very, very careful here. But we're going to go back to our invisibility for now. And you can see that our, our Yone is also dead. But I think the big thing is, is that the look at the base. Look at their base at the moment in the top left. That's the big thing. We use our Protobel. We fo first ability forward as well. We kill the Soraka. We then kill the Pantheon as well afterwards. And it's beautiful. You know, we were able to stop the Baron from that play. So that means they can't take the Baron anymore. They're not going to be able to take Baron at all. I mean, actually, though, I think they are still taking Baron. Um, I'm not actually too sure. Oh, I think this is when Jin actually steals the Baron. Yeah. <laughs> I remember this now. Jin steals the Baron with his four shot. And the big reason why he stole that is because we were able to stay camouflage. We jump onto Soraka straight away. We killed Soraka with our ultimate, and then we were able to kill Pantheon straight afterwards. So their jungler was down. And at that point, it's a 50-50. With no jungler on either side, it's always a 50-50. So the ultimate is pretty big from Jin there. And he was able to pretty much save the game for us. Um, you can see that everything is a little bit harder as the game goes on because the further the game goes on, the more damage enemy champions will be dealing, which means it's very, very hard for you to try and jump in and one-shot someone onto the back line. But you can see full build now, 16,000 gold for us. Jin unfortunately gets caught again. Um, <laughs> you can see that I'm uh, pinging him quite a lot. Um, I, for some reason, Jin was like overextending constantly as a Baron laner, I, as a uh, ADC. I have no idea why. Um, but you can see that their base is in pretty much shambles at the moment. They have to basically defend double super minions from mid wave and from top wave. So we're going to use this opportunity to just jump straight onto the Baron, which you should be able to take pretty damn easily here. There you go. Baron has been taken, which means that'll be good. We're going to get a little bit of healing back up as well from our honey fruit. Go back, clear through the blue buff clear through the jungle as well to be fair i'm full build i'm not too sure why i'm doing this but i just cleared through two camps i just wanted to get the blue buff as well so i get the regeneration and the extra uh i don't think actually do you get ability case anymore from blue buff i'm not too sure i think you do because it's the evolved version i think the evolved version you still get the uh, extra ability haste you can see here i'm gonna look to try and charm ari maybe just scare her a little bit you can see that she has to go um back towards her base and you can see there's a fight in bot side I'm going to use this as just my advantage. I'm going to use this just to push mid wave because I have the Baron buff. I'm just going to push mid wave and use this as a distraction, which is basically what we're going to do. I'm going to use my flash. <laughs> you can see my damage. My damage is absolutely disgusting. I use my flash to go over the wall. I use my whip flash. I use my hate spikes with my ultimate and <laughs> Ari's just dead. I mean, Ari was dead from my third ability and my first ability. I didn't even use my ultimate. I could use my ultimate to, to just escape away instead. Uh, but that will do it for the gameplay. Hopefully you learned a thing or two and hopefully you learned from my mistakes as well um, at the same time. We're going to take a quick look at the stats. So 13, 6 and 5 overall. 42,000 damage for Evelyn. So a lot of burst damage on Evelyn indeed, which makes her 
very very strong like i said if you can understand how her camouflage works if you can roam around the map and play well uh then you're always going to do well with evelyn but anyways that will do it for my evelyn guide hopefully you enjoyed it stay tuned for the next guide which will be ezreal so stay tuned for that and i'll see you in the next wilder video peace